It's a bear. Boy, I'd do the opposite of this coin, that's for sure. <laughs> hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Got the uh, live, wow, look at that. Sorry about that. Live, my, you see how short my attention span is. The live Miami uh, coral cam. Uh, I have seen some fantastic, colorful fish down here I've never seen before. Uh, some pretty cool critters there. Well, uh, this you can view for free. It's on YouTube and it's under the Coral City Miami Cam, no matter where you live, if you want to uh, relax and uh, enjoy a uh, show of beautiful little critters, here you go. Well, let's move into spot prices. Speaking of beautiful things, let's take a look at spot prices today. Wow, surprise the hell out of me. You know what? If I were a betting man, I, was, I would have uh, bet that silver and gold were going to be down today. I just had that kind of feeling that it was going to be a monkey hammer Friday. I mean, we still got Sunday night to look at. You know, gold could still get uh, monkey hammered Sunday night. Um, <clears throat> uh, which brings up a good point here uh, before I get into uh, current spot prices and what we're looking at right now. Uh, and you can see the numbers here as I'm talking. Um, you know, it seems that uh, that gold and silver, it's two different entities that monkey hammer gold and silver. I mean, two, two totally different entities. Gold is being monkey hammered by uh, uh, central banks uh, through the BIS. Now, you can read this through GATA.org. They'll explain how it's done. You know, we all know this. I'm not going to rehash stuff we've talked about a hundred times. So gold is typically monkey hammered by uh, 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 again, central banks and uh, through the biz and through their entities. Silver, completely different uh, uh, group of monkey hammers <laughs> and a completely different market. I don't believe that BIS nor uh, 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 central banks give a god darn about uh, 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 silver at all. I mean, I don't think they care less about it. However, what a lot of silver people forget is that uh, uh, gold does tend to be the leader when it comes to gold, silver, and platinum, palladium, I don't know about, and I don't care really. Uh, but uh, gold does seem to be the leader of those. When gold goes up, uh, eventually, uh, invariably, uh, silver and platinum will follow, and it doesn't happen the other way around. Silver doesn't go up dramatically, and gold just stays the same. It just doesn't seem to work that way. Although there's a lot of dynamics, I think, in play that would silver would seem to be, silver, in my opinion, should be at least 50 bucks an ounce right now with gold at 1800. But let's let's uh, not talk about that either. That's again opinionated. My well, sure, why not share opinions? But uh, let's move into spot price. Well, hang on one second. I, I kind of get a little <laughs> off track here. So because <clears throat> uh, I forgot my primary point of what I was going to talk about the two different entities. So gold is uh, monkey hammered by uh, Biz and their entities, and uh, silver is monkey hammered by the four to eight. Uh, commercial uh, banks out there and uh, manage money too, uh, uh, probably. Uh, although Ted Butler says that uh, managed money usually holds the uh, long positions and commercials hold the short positions, uh, that may be changing. In fact, uh, uh, commercials may be getting out of this short position because 2448 silver, which you're looking at right here, is certainly not helpful to them anyway. Take a look at this to uh, move up to 2483. Uh, with that said, I have noticed that gold is the one that typically gets monkey hammered on, uh, it seems to be Fridays or usually on uh, uh, Sunday nights. Gold seems to and silver seems to follow it. Uh, silver seems to get monkey hammered mostly in the uh, trading hours of, uh, uh, of New York uh, when New York opens at uh, 8.20 in the morning and maybe at London too as well, which is I think an hour early. Mm, I forget, <clears throat> you got to take a look at the time frame. Uh, so let's look at overnight markets here. Low of 1783 and uh, 66 and a high of 1814 uh, uh, just a few minutes ago, not too long ago, in New York as well. We'll look at the graph and I'll show you where that happened. Uh, and uh, let's take a look at silver, 2448, uh, low of 2415. I thought it was going to touch that 23, high 23 level again, which would have been okay with me. I kind of suspected that's where we were going to go, and then we'd kind of march back up in the 24s. I didn't see it happening today on Friday, but again, um, you know, it is what it is. So uh, 2448 uh, silver right now up, uh, 2483 is the high. Wow, you know, almost 40 cents higher there. Uh, so we're kind of sitting in that mid-range uh, between the high and low overnights. And platinum at 1053, just kind of chugging along. Uh, but it looks like it did go to 1077. Uh, so maybe it's on its march to that 1100 mark. Uh, are metals getting ready to make their next move up? Wow, I'd be very surprised if they didn't. But, you know, being in this business as long as I have, I can tell you that I don't care who it is, chartist. I don't care if it's uh, people that have been in the business a long time. 
uh, unless they have a crystal ball, it's really hard to pick out these short terms with precious metals for the most part. Uh, however, I kind of felt that the lows were in a little while ago. Uh, I've been saying for quite some time, if you watch my videos, when we were marching down from that 30s to uh, um, um, low 20s, um, I, I didn't believe we were going to get sub 20 unless we hit some kind of like crazy anomaly. And I don't, and we haven't. We haven't hit a sub $20 level. I think the sub $20 levels are pretty much over and done for. Um, so, <clears throat> and uh, sorry about that. I didn't mean to have you ringing that in your ear. I think the 20, uh, 20, sub $20 level is pretty much done for unless you see a complete, utter economic collapse of the greatest bubble of all time, which will take down the price of silver, gold, platinum, palladium, everything. It'll take down everybody all at once. Uh, the thing is, is that uh, gold and silver, that'll be a paper play mostly. Most of it, uh, uh, physical stuff, no one's going to lay off physical. 2008, when, when gold and silver just dropped because everything else dropped, the paper price dropped, you couldn't buy precious metals first off for that paper price that you saw, for the price you saw online. Deliveries on silver were weeks out. Uh, delivery on gold was weeks out. Premium on gold eagles was as high as it was recently with, with gold at almost half the price, truthfully. Uh, and silver, the same thing. Silver premiums were as high as they have been recently. You know, silver uh, eagles were, what, 12 to 13 bucks over spot at the height here over the last year. Uh, gold eagles were 200 bucks over spot over the last year. In 2008, again, with prices being half this and half this, or not half this, but yeah, almost half that, being half these two prices right here, premiums were about the same as they were this last year. So imagine the gold's at $740 an ounce. You know, in 2008, you just saw everything collapse and you want to go buy some gold, but you don't want to buy paper gold, you want to buy physical gold. Uh, <clears throat> you know, so you don't really not look. So you go out and you call your local deal and he says, well, I can get you Krug Ranch, but they're going to run you, uh, gold's at uh, 750, they're going to run you 950 each and it's going to be three months before you get them. That's what happened, folks, when, uh, when, every, when, when the bubble, the 2008 bubble burst. Uh, what's it going to look like uh, when this bubble burst? I don't know. You know, I'm thinking that they're doing their best to slowly let the air, un untie the knot on the balloon and slowly let the air out, to give you an analogy. That's what I think that central banks are trying to do. Um, <clears throat> I don't think governments are smart enough to do that, uh, the people that run them at least. But I believe central banks are trying to slowly let the air out of the balloon rather than massive collapses. But, you know, you know what's that? You ever tried to untie a knot on a balloon, especially a good one? You end up just end up ripping the whole thing and boom, the balloon it explodes, implodes, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so what ha what's, what's the next implosion going to look like? Uh, markets look really good today. Let me do a quick refresh, see if anything's changed here in the last few minutes. Did we go into the, yeah, we did. There it goes. Uh, <laughs> gold, uh, that's a psychological mark, 1800. So we did hit a uh, uh, intraday of 1800 here. Will it close at 1800? I don't know. The pressure looks a little down. And uh, take a look at the charts here over the last couple weeks. I have noticed this, and this trend, this pattern. And what is the pattern? Is that the rise in precious metals, that, take a look, here you go. Up, up, uh, this is uh, uh, what would be Wednesday. This is Wednesday, up what time? New York, and down again in New York, okay? Take a look on yesterday. What time was it up? New York, at the opening of New York, and the uh, uh, down again by before noon time in New York. Take a look at today. Up when? Substantially, too, quite a bit further from where it was. Up in New York. And uh, I think we're starting to see this line come down about the same, maybe a little bit later uh, than we have the last couple of days. But all in New York and all before noontime and typically, before, well, it's about 11 o'clock now, typically before 12 o'clock. So take a look at this. And if we went into the uh, charts for the last couple of weeks, you would have saw this same little thing. Although we did see some valleys at the same time. So there's something funky going on in New York, at NYMEX markets, uh, and, and likely it has to do with COMEX. Uh, both with gold and silver here. Uh, let's take a look at the silver chart too, same thing. Look at what time, New York, eight in the morning, boom, all this week here, ready? Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, Friday, I mean Wednesday, Thursday, and today. Uh, look at that bump, bang, right there. We're, and again, all kind of over with by uh, 12 o'clock uh, noontime. So I suspect if this trend follows through, what we're gonna, do, we're gonna see gold close at sub $1,800 today. Um, let me just kind of refresh that screen one more time. I think we're going to see a sub $1,800 close today, but this looks very promising, folks. Uh, again, enter day high of over $1,800, 1814 
Uh, same thing with silver, an intraday high 2483. Um, and I think we're going to hang on to this $24 mark uh, for now, at least with silver. Let's see what happens Sunday night. Uh, again, I tell you, it's kind of like uh, I've been conditioned to, uh, for years and years and years, the trend was to, to nail it on uh, Fridays and on Sunday nights and during holidays, week trading sessions, uh, you know, in thinly traded markets. That's when gold and silver uh, has typically been monkey hammered. Uh, so I'm conditioned to that. So it's almost like every time someone shows me a hammer, I start to I blink, I flinch. You know? so, uh, and, and what would the hammer be? A hammer would be Fridays and Saturdays and, and thinly traded markets. So I'm flinching a little bit for Sunday, but you know, there's some good strength into this. Well, maybe they're going to knock the sales out a little bit on Sunday night. We'll see. Um, for, the, for, the, for those of you that still had some more money and you wanted to uh, 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 buy at a lower price, maybe there's an opportunity on uh, Monday to do that. However, the strength today, I think, again, we're, uh, uh, we're going to see the closes right about this level. Uh, I think we're going to see closes for the rest of the day. And again, that's just a trend. Uh, all week, it's been between eight, 8 in the morning and noontime, pretty much, and really eight on, between 8 and 11, but right now it's kind of extended a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, all the activity in uh, gold and silver seems to be in that particular time frame. Who's doing it? Okay, is this one trader or is it a bunch of traders? Or why are they all trading at the same time? I mean, these are questions I ask myself. So I find it kind of an interesting pattern. Uh, if anybody's got any thoughts on uh, who's doing that trading, why and why at that particular time of day and why in New York, uh, I'd be interested to know as well. Uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, Seeking Alpha. I like their website, as you know. Uh, the seasonal lows appear to be in place, kind of what I was just talking about uh, as far as silver, but I believe that with gold too, I think the seasonal lows are in. I think 1720 this year was the, uh, did we almost touch the, uh, gosh, I forget what the low was uh, this last year. Was it uh, high 16s, low 17s or something? I kind of actually forget. But I, I would have to concur that the lows are in, especially with silver. I am sure that the lows are in with silver right, well, hold on. Um, not the lows for the rest of the year, but uh, I don't, I can't see sub twenty dollars silver again unless we see a complete utter market collapse of the greatest bubble of all time. And uh, what's uh, seeking alpha? You can read this for free. It's kind of cool. Here, let me back up here. Uh, they have gold and precious metals news. There's a bunch of articles here. I think some of you'll find it uh, very interesting and different opinions. I like that. I like different opinions, uh, even if they don't all agree with each other. Uh, a base case for silver, bang. Uh, and again, I believe you can read this all for free. I'm subscribed uh, to the site. I like the site. There's other features they give you. Uh, and then they don't pay me for saying this, by the way. Uh, but the gold, the seasonal lows, uh, just to give you the summary points, because I encourage you to read this stuff on your own. Uh, it's been difficult to trade the metals markets over the past year. Fundamentals have been indicating that gold and silver should be shooting up. Uh, and of course, you know, the fundamentals indicate that, and, and I know what fundamentals indicate, but the problem is, is we're not dealing with fundamentals. We're not, we haven't been dealing with any fundamentals. I mean, uh, anyone that thinks that uh, the, any fundamentals are in play in any market uh, of uh, recent is uh, only deluding themselves. Um, you know, fundamentals, are, you know, does, does monkey hammering by BIS, does monkey hammering by four to eight uh, 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 big uh, 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 commercial banks. Is that is that fundamentals? I mean, I don't know. Uh, I, this is something I ask myself all the time. If if the markets are being manipulated and heavily manipulated by uh, specific large traders, uh, is is that fundamentals? No, it really isn't. You know, is pumping huge amounts of money into the system a fundamental? No, it really is. What's a fundamental? Um, well, fundamental would be that gold and silver were going up as a direct relationship to the money supply, uh, but actually. You know, I'm going to get there next, so let me move along here. Uh, the debt ceiling will have to be increased or the world's economy will collapse. Uh, again, equity management uh, makes mention of this. That's something I, I would probably have to disagree with. The debt ceiling will have to be increased or the world economy will The world economy of, of banks and, and uh, certain uh, crony corporations will collapse. The average business person out there is not going to collapse. I mean, really, if you think about it, in 2008, you know, uh, the, 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 the biggest issue was that the working man had his money in the stock market, and the stock market took a big shit. Uh, but, you know, y y the stock market, like any other market, is heavily manipulated, and everyone should know this. So if you got money, if you just blindly put money into any market uh, and don't expect it to go down, or, you know, then shame on you. Uh, so uh, I don't believe the debt ceiling will have to uh, uh, be increased. Uh, I believe that uh, you should let markets fail. Uh, I believe that uh, you should let banks fail, major corporations fail. You should let a country's cur 
currency fail if that's where it's going? Why keep putting Band-Aids on a, uh, on, a, on a dam that keeps, or a dike that keeps springing holes? I mean, a dam or a dike, okay. Uh, why keep uh, uh, putting Band-Aids on it? I mean, at some point, the, it, the whole thing's gonna go. So, and that's exactly what uh, governments have been doing and, and these big corporations that we deal with. It's not about, uh, the debt ceiling doesn't have to be increased because you or I are going to suffer from it. It's because they are going to suffer from it. That's the biggest thing, particularly uh, politicians. Uh, the high debt level, let me move to the next one, the high debt levels and massive stimulus are destroying the value of the dollar, which should cause precious metals to soar, but they haven't so far. I, uh, I agree with that 100%. Um, and a couple of things that I agree with. I, I don't agree that the debt ceiling has to be increased. Uh, and I don't believe, uh, I believe that fundamentals um, uh, have been indicating that gold and silver uh, uh, should be shooting up. And I think should be, uh, they should, will be shooting up would probably be better. I wouldn't say should be, but will be. I think precious metals are lagging a little bit behind that. And again, you got to figure that there's a lot of monkey hammering and manipulation in precious metal markets too. Uh, and they say down here, but they haven't so far. In the long run, we believe they will, and I concur with this uh, exactly. And uh, uh, they talk about fundamentals here. Uh, let's just read this, because since we're talking about fundamentals, I'll just kind of go into it. And again, I encourage you to read this article by uh, Equity Management Academy. These guys put the time in to write this stuff, and, and uh, I think it's worthwhile reading a lot of this as well, if you're into precious metals. Uh, <clears throat> It has been difficult to trade the metals over the past year, I agree. The fundamentals have been indicating that gold and silver should be shooting, yet the markets have been going down in a great deal. Emotion drives the markets to extremes, which we use AI to monitor and determine when the market hits those extremes. Now, they are correct on emotions drive the markets to extremes, but that I don't believe that at all. I don't believe that emotions drive the markets to, well, yes they do. However, what drives emotions? You know, that's the whole thing. And uh, they use AI to monitor this stuff. Well, I am firm belief that uh, large, large traders out there, uh, the big boys out there, use AI as well. And they also use AI to spoof markets, to uh, uh, fat finger markets, to cause markets to go down, to sell, to, 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 to you know, again, I believe they use this. and. and what that does is that creates the emotions that drive the markets down. So I, I sincerely believe that the, uh, uh, there's a lot of, like the manipulation of uh, silver with the uh, four to eight uh, commercial banks, all right? I believe that they purposely try to drive the prices down and uh, uh, to create the emotions that people want to get out of that market, okay? So I don't think just emotions drive the market. I think that the emotions are driven by uh, 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 manipulative people out there. The emotions are driven, and that's what's driving the markets. Not, not the markets themselves driving people's emotions, but, in, but corporations driving the emotions to drive the markets. You get me there? Did that make sense to you? I hope it did. Either that or <laughs> I only make sense to myself. Uh, so we believe the debt ceiling will have to be increased or the world economy will be at risk of potential collapse. Now, I'm going to have to disagree with that. Um, and again, if it, if, it, if it deserves to collapse, it deserves to collapse. At some point, uh, you gotta let things fail, you know? And you gotta let people that are smart enough and have the money uh, after it all falls to pieces to pick up the pieces and rebuild it better. Uh, the problem we have today is we just double down on stupid. You throw more money at it. Oh, well, of course, more money's gonna fix it. Hell no, we know this as well as anybody. Money, more money is not gonna fix shit. Um, in fact, it just exasperates the problem. Uh, I'm going to kind of move along here. The COVID pandemic led the Fed and government to decide that no one should suffer too much from the p pandemic economically. The Treasury paid those who could not work and help businesses that were hit by the pandemic. See, I think this is a little bit too rosy, you know, when they're describing this. Uh, the only reason the Treasury paid those who could not work and help businesses that were hit by the pandemic. Uh, and let me trust, let me tell you one thing too where this article gets it wrong. The pandemic is not what caused the economic issue. It was the reaction to the pandemic is what's caused and, and how, uh, uh, how corporations and governments reacted to the pandemic. That's what has caused the significant issue we have with the economy. Not only the fact that prior to the pandemic, we had major economic issues, major economic issues prior to this. You know, So um, uh, this is not, this is just, 2008, uh, uh, after 2008, 
again, the Treasury paid people this year money. You know, again, they gave uh, the average working folk, oh, you know, here, you're not working, here's an extra thousand or twelve hundred dollars or whatever. You know, the only reason they gave us that pittance, that twelve hundred or whatever the hell they gave the working class guy out there and the poor out there, a couple hundred bucks, twelve hundred, whatever the frick it was. Uh, the only reason they gave them that is because they knew they couldn't do another 2008 and just bail out their buddies, all right? 2008, they bailed out their buddies and nobody else. They knew if they did that again, that they would be tarred and feathered and driven out of town on a rail. That is only reason the Treasury gave us that measly 1200 frickin' dollars or whatever it was uh, and gave businesses the extra money because they knew if they didn't give some money, some pittance of money to the average working guy and the uh, small businesses that, again, we would probably tar and feather them and, and uh, uh, drive them out on a rail. You know, uh, they're good at buying people off. Therefore, the Treasury directly contributed to the consumer inflation. This is true, since income and spending stayed the same in the face of a falling supply due to lockdowns and supply chain issues, uh, and then prices had to rise. Uh, I agree with that mostly. I think the supply chain issues were created by the response of corporations and governments. It wasn't caused directly by the uh, uh, um, issue itself, which I'd rather not name. Well, let me move along here. Good article. I definitely recommend you read it. It's by Equity Management Academy. Uh, just because I disagree with a few things in there, don't mean that I don't that I, that I can't agree with some other stuff. So, um, agree with most of that article for the most part. Uh, let's take a look at what they're talking about too. The relationship. Uh, I, I've been looking at the macro trend charts, and they're pretty cool, man. There's all kinds of charts. I told you yesterday. Uh, uh, this last week, I discovered this page. I knew they had charts. I typed them in manually, but they got all kinds of cool charts right here. Dow to gold, gold to oil. Again, I encourage uh, my folks that uh, have been watching my videos to go there and uh, uh, play around with it. It's free and it's pretty cool. You can, you know, uh, show recessions. You can show the five or ten year chart. Now, this chart only goes back to like uh, I've typed in all years, so I guess this is a fairly new chart. Only goes back to around 2005. Uh, but take a look at the, the Fed balance sheet versus the gold prices. Uh, and again, you can kind of see a correlation here. Take a look at this. When the Fed was able to kind of flatten that curve upward or downward out for a while is when gold kind of just went sideways too as well. And uh, uh, take a look at this, the, the, the Fed's, uh, what is it, God, the Fed's, uh, what they own actually, but the uh, uh, balance sheet, the Fed's balance sheet. Take a look at the Fed's balance sheet now. That's just freaking incredible. And again, you can see the correlation here of, here you go, the Fed's balance sheet is slowly shrinking. Oddly enough, and this doesn't seem to make a lot of sense, as the uh, Fed's balance sheet is shrinking, how come the price of gold is going up? It seems that, hmm, kind of a little tough, but these pose questions to me that I think are very interesting. And if I can connect the dots here, you can connect the dots. It just makes it a much smarter uh, uh, player at the uh, table. Uh, again, that's just my opinion. What's the Wall Street Journal spinning today? Uh, I used to be a subscriber. I'm not going to tell you that boring story again here. It's a front page. Anyone can look at it for free. So it looks like it's just the same old single narrative, single point view, uh, official narrative uh, that uh, uh, crony corporations and government give us on a daily basis. All right, we knew this. Over Grand makes you know, state media says uh, investors bet inflation prices will linger. Uh, what else is on here? Anything cool? Let's look at the markets. Oh, markets are down Friday, and it looks like uh, the Dow's down a little bit. Everything's in the red here slightly. Nasdaq's down quite a bit, actually. Surprising. Uh, not surprising, I guess. And uh, yeah, looks like the market's in the red. Let's go back over here because it was in the green when I looked before I started this. Uh, and let's see if uh, gold markets are a little bit up as well or if they're about the same. Uh, no, actually, uh, just down a little bit, actually. So we're about sideways. Again, I think we're going to close uh, below 1800 today, just my opinion. Uh, let's move into uh, nothing to talk about Wall Street Journal. Of course, you know, I always like to make my opinions. I, I say that uh, politics and economics has a large uh, influence in the price of gold and price of silver. That's why I like to make comments economically and politically. Um, I made a few comments yesterday, got a few people upset talking about socialism and Marxist uh, and uh, talking about socialism, communism and how they kind of all go along with each other a little bit. And uh, I won't back down from that statement. I 100% believe that. 
Uh, as many of you know, I am not a Republican nor a Democrat. I am kind of independent. I consider myself fiscally conservative, socially liberal, the best of both worlds. Uh, so the idea that someone thinks I'm a fascist, by the way, and that was a comment that was made, is totally ludicrous. <laughs> uh, you know, just because someone disagrees with you doesn't make them a bad person, folks. And I say the same thing. I disagree with socialists, Marxists, and communists, uh, but it doesn't make them bad people necessarily. I think their heart's in the right place. Uh, in fact, that's the one thing I can say about socialists is that if I, if I were king of the world, I would allow socialists, I would hire socialists to run specific problems that deal with people, but I would never give them the purse strings and allow them in a banking system, period. <laughs> you know you know who these people are. They got great hearts and they got good, good intentions, but uh, you give them a checkbook, man, you're screwed. So, <laughs> and that's exact. That's on the socialist side of it. On the uh, uh, Marxist and communist, I don't trust them at all. And I think there is a thin line between socialism and communism. Uh, and you can look at that for yourself. Well, there you went. I went into my little political spiel. And um, uh, I'm not even going to click that one. <laughs> I'm sure that'll get some people going. Uh, gold up again, Binance coin, Bitcoin uh, blunder. It looks like uh, Bitcoin was down. Uh, gold is up today. And. Uh, uh, that's true. What is in that economic plan? Uh, the few things that I know that are in that economic plan are god awful. Making it, making people report anything over 600, which is now changed to 10,000. Uh, basically, the one thing that I'm familiar with in that bill, and I hope this bill doesn't get passed. I mean, it's just horrific uh, for for everyone, working class people. It's horrific for, uh, you know. Again, I'm not blue or red, but these people are lying to you, folks. You know. Uh, and what is in that plan is uh, a, a, a way for IRS to know everything that comes in and out of your accounts. They, they were going to try to get banks to report all income that goes into your bank and out of your bank above six hundred. They've raised that threshold to ten thousand dollars. Now, folks, I don't think that's per transaction. I think that's per year. Okay, per year. And what American doesn't spend more than ten thousand dollars per year? So, uh, if I'm correct, uh, again the uh, the their, their plans are so vague and you really can't figure out what they're doing there, but I don't trust them at all. Um, I, don't, I, I even think the $1.5 trillion infrastructure package is a really bad idea. What we should be doing is focusing on getting our, uh, our economic uh, situation back in check, trying to fix the dollar, even though I think it's pretty damn broken, and uh, uh, helping small businesses and the working class, not just jawboning it like these uh, fuckers do. Uh, again, that's just my opinion. Uh, that's a sad, that's pretty sad. Uh, true social justice in the American way has really nothing to do with uh, uh, the new Superman that's come out, which is kind of interesting, showing a different relationship with Superman's son. <laughs> and uh, again, I'm cool with that, but you know why, really? We're, are we living in a uh, uh, bizarre world right now where it just doesn't make sense to me? Uh, again, that's not kind of my subject, and I'm cool with whatever people do in their personal life, doesn't matter. Um, Biden finally admits that they, um, hmm, oh wow, interesting, uh, I didn't know that. That was very interesting, I saw this yesterday, and uh, uh, my understanding is that uh, it was up 700% yesterday, his uh, new SPAC, uh, you know, the new investment into the uh, competition against Facebook, so uh, that was kind of interesting. Uh, not too much uh, precious metals news here, which I find interesting with metals moving up and everything. I think, thought, I, think I would find a lot more articles in uh, ZH uh, regarding that. Uh, Alice Dare McLeod wrote a really kind of cool article, A Tale of Two Civilizations, and uh, it talks about uh, China and, uh, uh, well, here's the, here's the end result. And let me see, where does it come down here? You know what? I think I can read this whole thing. I'm not going to read the whole article. I'm just going to read the outline. In recent year, America's unsuccessful attempts at containing China as a rival, uh, uh, hegemon, again, I'm not, <laughs> some words I can botch, I know what it means, sorry about that, have uh, only served to promote Chinese uh, antipathy against, <laughs> there I go, against American capitalism. Uh, China is now retreating into the comfortable of her, uh, comfort of her long-established moral values, best described as a mixture of Confucianism and Marxism. While despising American individualism, its careless regard for family values and encouragement of get-rich uh, financial speculation. Uh, these are things in America I don't care about as well, like the Chinese don't, but I do value highly American individualism. 
American individualism is what makes this country great, and I will argue that with anybody. Uh, after America's defeat in Afghanistan, the geopolitical issue is now Taiwan, where things are heating up, hotting up, it says here, I thought, <laughs> uh, in the wake of the uh, uh, AUKUS agreement, uh, the, you know, the United States and the Australia agreement. Uh, Taiwan is an important because it produces two-thirds of the world's computer chips. Meanwhile, the large U.S. banks are complacent concerning Taiwan, preferring to salivate at the money-making prospects of a China's $45 trillion financial service markets. Um, the outcome of the Taiwan issue is likely to be decided by the evolution of economic factors. This is very interesting, folks, and I think it's true. Uh, and one of the interesting things is right at the bottom of this uh, paragraph. Uh, China is protecting herself against a global credit crisis by restraining its creation. This is what I just spoke about a few minutes ago. If our country was smart, if our politicians were smart, and if these uh, socialist in government were even halfway smart when it comes to fiscal stuff, we wouldn't be spending one point. We can't afford 1.5 trillion on a uh, uh, infrastructure plan. That's just buying votes, folks. That 3.5 trillion dollar social programs, that two, that's just buying votes, folks. It's just an, another uh, uh, nail in the coffin. We can't afford it. We can't afford it, period. Um, so that's what I was talking about, socialists running the uh, uh, checkbook, man. You're, they'll just uh, bankrupt you for sure. And, uh, and again, this is what I'm talking about. China, meanwhile, is trying to protect itself, trying to slowly uh, let the air out of the balloon, as I made the analogy earlier, while America is going full MMT, uh, which is the uh, modern, modern monetary theory, uh, which is complete wacko bullshit, all right? Uh, and again, this is what happens when you send a socialist to an economic school. <laughs> so, uh, the outcome is likely to be combined financial market and dollar crisis for America. Okay, taking down its Western, uh, God, there's a couple words in here I'm going to screw up. Ep Epijones, all right, forget it. I'm not even going to try as well. Uh, China has protected herself by cornering the market for physical gold and secretly accumulating as much as 20 to 30,000 tons in national reserves. That should give you pause of thought. Who is going to win this battle? China is actually planning on winning this battle. And how do you win the battle? Follow the fucking money. It's all about money, folks. Who's going to have the most money coming out of this? Who is going to be the last horse to the glue factory? Uh, I know that the U.S. Treasury wants to be, uh, but China is going to physically do it. And, and, and the, tre US tre the U.S. The US uh, Federal Reserve uh, the central bank, the U.S. Federal Reserve, they don't care if America goes bankrupt. Those guys will all be eating steak, living in their rich, you know, their, their rich environments. They're completely clueless to what you're actually going through. Uh, but what China is actually doing here by accumulating gold is they're trying to protect their system. And again, I'm not defending China. I think they, they're awful when it comes to uh, uh, the CCP, the Chinese Communist government. But I think by accumulating gold and by trying to protect their uh, 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 national economic system, even the uh, small businesses, uh, is a good thing. Something that our country is not doing in any way, shape, or form. Our country is basically in bed, our government is in bed with crony corporate, or it's crony corporatism. It, whereas it means that if you're uh, aligned with our government, if you are in bed with our government, or you have enough money to have lobbyists or people uh, uh, electing these people in office and helping them out, then uh, you get special favors. Uh, that's not capitalism, folks. That's crony capitalism. We have crony capitalism in this country. Uh, at least with the Chinese, they admit it outright that they're just controlling everything. Uh, and uh, maybe some of it might be even slightly altruistic, you know, as far as trying to, uh, uh, but not really. China knows that when the working class man uh, has nothing to eat, when the working class and small businesses get pushed into a corner, they will tar and feather everyone. Uh, remember, it's the masses. The masses are the uh, small businesses and the uh, uh, working class. Uh, that's the masses. And when you piss off the masses and you don't have enough money to buy them off anymore and you piss them off, uh, they'll come for you and they will, uh, again, tar and feather you and drive you out of town on a rail. That'll be the nice thing they do. Uh, and uh, uh, that's what our country is kind of doing right now, it's just paying off the uh, poor and paying off small businesses with these pittances that they hand you. Uh, but at some point, they're going to uh, break the bank, and, um, and it looks like the uh, socialist Democrats are going to uh, be the ones to do it. Uh, it's going to go under their watch, more than likely. Uh, if the dollar fails, 
which without a radical change in the monetary policy is set to do, with a gold back in China expects to not only survive, but to be able to consolidate Taiwan into its terror. And of course they will. You know, do you think that any Western country undergoing a major uh, decline in its uh, uh, value overall, its GDP, everything across the board, uh, its, its currency going to shit, is going to be able to afford to get into a major war? I don't think so. So the best thing that China can do right now to win this is win the economic war because obviously they looks like they're on their way to doing it and the uh, people that we have running our government are completely clueless and stupid. And I'm not going to say that the uh, uh, last administration was any better. Last administration, there was nothing fiscally conservative about them either. So, you know, uh, we, we just continue to uh, elect uh, uh, people in the office that get worse and worse and worse every election, every election, bar none, since I remember. Well, let me move out of here. And uh, I think uh, uh, this very interesting article, Alice Dermot Garrett, uh, McLeod, A Tale of Two Civilizations, worth reading in GATA.org. You can get into the uh, gritty little details yourself. I recommend it. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, I found this uh, comical, especially since it was written before gold went up and, and uh, cryptos went down again. Investors flee gold for cryptocurrencies, inflation worries uh, war, uh, rise. This was written by Financial Times, uh, FT. So it doesn't surprise me out of London. FT is a mainstream corporate uh, source of news. Uh, investors are dumping gold for cryptocurrencies uh, as inflation picks up. I find this is a hit article against gold and a, uh, uh, it's, come on, give me a break, really. You know, the whales are in the crypto market. You think, you think that the gold and silver markets are manipulated? Uh, wait, wait do you see what the whales do to the average Joe out there in the crypto market. Uh, and uh, my understanding is just the other day, uh, yesterday or late yesterday or today, uh, someone sold a huge amount, a whale, uh, and guess who's holding the bag? All the retail little guys, the working class guys, the small businesses that get suckered into it. Folks, I can tell you, if you know how this game is played, go ahead and play the cryptocurrencies, but play it the same way that you would if you were going to Las Vegas. Put a little fun money aside, go and learn the game, play it, and if you can make some money, throw a little more fun money at it. Uh, but if, but you know, if you find that uh, you're, you're not a seasoned player and you can't sit down at the table and win, uh, get the fuck out of it, trust me on this. Uh, stick with gold and silver, much more simpler. And again, historic track record that none of these things have. Um, gold and silver have a historic track record that no corporations, no empires, uh, and certainly no currencies, uh, whether digital or physical, ever has survived. You know, gold and silver survived long past any of them. Historic track record, folks. That should mean something when you're buying a, a product, any kind of, you know, especially when you're investing your hard-earned money into something. Uh, Wall Street Silver, um, let's see here. Let me just do a quick refresh and see. I want to see if there's any questions. Like I always like to kind of look and see if there's any questions I can answer. Uh, 755,000 ounces of October Silver Comics contracts bought with six trading days to contract expire. Uh, PSL is holding 24 million in fiat for two days now. Okay. Uh, how much silver does Wall Street Silver uh, board own? Oh, that's kind of an interesting question. And um, yeah, I wonder really, out of uh, all the people on here, I wonder how many ounces are actually by all the members out there. Uh, but I guess if you include myself and uh, uh, Sprott and other big dealers, quite a bit actually. But on a whole, man, even if you had, how many members are out there? I'm sorry, I don't mean to make you dizzy here, but if you have like 165,000 members, and uh, uh, just even one ounce each is 165,000 ounces. Uh, uh, Ten times that would be uh, uh, 165,000 uh, ounces. So obviously, uh, I'm figuring that every member out here is, if you include everybody, at least owns 10 ounces. So 165,000, what would that be? Uh, yeah, 165,000 ounces in that, in that uh, oh, oh, no, no. No, it wouldn't be at the, jeez, uh, 165. Uh, 1.6, sorry, my math skills are kind of going south right now while I'm trying to do two things at once here. Um, I bought silver at $24 while everyone is buying digital currency at six. God kind of says it in a nutshell. That's one thing I love. I love memes. That's a, the internet age has brought one beautiful thing is memes, something that says it all in, in like a picture and a couple words. And uh, this kind of does. Uh, I like that. Um, I'm not the world's most physical guy, but I have a six pack. Well, let me move out of here. I could kind of just scroll down here and talk about stuff. Listen, if you're not subscribed to Wall Street Silver, really cool community, I suggest you do. And uh, uh, it's pretty cool. 
Uh, let's talk about uh, yesterday's video, silver confiscation, which was uh, kind of a carry through of the, uh, um, I put silver illegal to own the day before as the uh, thumbnail. And uh, I've kind of touched on this subject a little bit. I thought of the title afterwards only because I touched on the subject that day. But what I did is I got into more detail yesterday and why I believe that silver confiscation is more likely than, uh, you're more likely to ever see a silver confiscation than you are a gold confiscation. And neither, which I really believe. Uh, however, I believe that silver on a strategic level, on a, as a strategic metal, is far more important than gold. Okay, I really do. I believe that. I believe that if manufacturing and industry, look what China did when they got short on the uh, iron and uh, uh, aluminum. They just said, screw it, we're, we're fixing prices, we're going to uh, sell state supplies to keep the prices down. It wasn't confiscation, but you know, they panicked. Can you imagine if that happened with silver? It would be a global panic. It would be, I mean, everybody uses silver in all kinds of, pro anything electronic has silver in it. So uh, that, that was my explanation yesterday. It wasn't a clickbait, although I gotta admit it was a good title to click on. It does get you kind of wondering what I was talking about. Uh, let's take a look at uh, some comments from yesterday. I'm gonna sort by newest first. And folks, I apologize I didn't get to comments uh, yesterday because I think um, I clicked out of my page here. So uh, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Donald says they probably should confiscate, uh, commence with the theft of local coin store inventory, <laughs> followed by comics and central bank medals. Uh, I don't know, man. Local coin stores shoot back. I'm not sure they're the first people. You probably want to go to comics and central banks first to confiscate their metal uh, before you go after local coin stores. Most of the local coin guys I know, even the grumpy ones, all carry big guns. So they're the last people you want to piss off, Don. Um, thank you for watching, Don. I appreciate it as well. And uh, Celtic got his 2021 uh, uh, American C uh, Silver Eagle Type 2 proofs. And now where are the Morgan and Peace dollars? Yeah, I'm still waiting for my Morgan and Peace dollars too. Um, the, God, delayed delivery. A friend of mine just called to say though that uh, his card got charged, so maybe we'll be seeing him soon, Celtic. Uh, yeah, I saw a lack of comments yesterday myself, but we got the video out pretty late too, Michael. And today's video is probably gonna be late too. I'm sorry about that. And uh, thanks for watching, Bruce. I wish you lived closer, but meanwhile, find a good local dealer. I'm all about doing business locally. I don't care if it's coins, precious metals, or tires. And jewelry, try to do it local. And uh, yeah, use silver and gold spoons to catch. Yes, I still uh, troll with a spoon, DC. I still take a spoon, big ass uh, 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 silver spoon, uh, and I'll put it on a, a planer, uh, which is about 40 or 50 feet down. We catch kingfish, all kinds of cool stuff on that. Uh, gee, nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love those Can Ams. Those are pretty cool. I was up in Tennessee in Pigeons Forge area, and they drive those on the street. I thought it was so cool. I was hoping Florida would do that. Uh, Cantankerous Chris asks, How can I say that socialists are economically stupid when socialist countries like. Uh, yes, Chris, I appreciate you. You're one of my good viewers, and I'd have to agree to disagree with you on some things. Um, and again, if you. Uh, Norway, one thing I am familiar with Norway uh, is that. Uh, uh, Norway actually started out as a super uh, strict socialist country, and then they started uh, 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 taking the state-owned, you know, businesses and state-owned uh, utilities and stuff, and they started to privatize it. They started to open up more to capitalism. That's when Norway's economy took off, sir. Uh, just take a look. Sweden, I can't tell you about, but I do know for sure if you look at the history of uh, Norway, um, it wasn't until they started backing away from socialism, I mean the true meaning of socialism. Um, uh, again, take a look at it, Investopedia will show you what socialism is. Um, I think it will, uh, but uh, true socialism. Norway started backing off from that, and it wasn't until they did that, uh, that Norway's economy started, until they became more capitalistic, that their, their economy became better, Chris. Uh, again, you can look that up for yourself. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it very well, sir. And even if we disagree on stuff, I still like you, buddy. Uh, Heart of Texas says, uh, <laughs> I agree 100%, F that, F that, I, F any censorship, sir, F any censorship. Uh, if you gotta censor someone, then it means that you're, you're probably in the wrong. Uh, Mike Dundee says, also got to get comments, want to post political, but may I preach anything? Yeah, you're right, Mike, but I'm going to do a political show at some point, I think. Uh, very interesting time to be alive, absolutely. Uh, uh, thanks for watching Ameripride. You too. Uh, buy silver and platinum. Uh, a lot of clappy hands. I like clappy hands. <laughs> uh, how long can a vital commodity remain cheap and undervalued? Exactly, tree climber, and that's what we were talking about yesterday, and we talk about all the time. Um, Mr. Uh-oh, here we go. 
Here we go. I love these guys. Mr. Eddie Dwayne is one of the best recommended to all beginners who want to recover losses like I did. I've been earning 10,250 returns for my 4,000. God, these are the, are these the, uh, let's see, what's he trying to sell here? Tutorials. This guy's selling tutorials, so I don't think he's selling, uh, uh, oh, there's the phone number. One, four. <laughs> Do these people really believe, I'm going to delete this, by the way, folks. Sorry about that. They end up in the comments section. Mostly it's about cryptos, and they're a bunch of scammers. So this John Howard is a scammer. He's got 60. It's all, jo not John Howard, it's all some guy puts up a fake name, and then he does this, and he hits a bunch of likes and view replies, and he puts his phone number down. Do people really fall for this, guys? Someone let me know in comments. Have you ever fallen for I don't think any of my viewers have. But, <laughs> but uh, uh, I can't believe people fall for this garbage right here. Anyway, go after yourself, Mr. Uh, whoever you are. Uh, Michael Matthews, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, Jay Gill says, check this out, Ryan. I was in my local coin store the other day. Notice he had collectible silver coins a minute for 450 a spot. The coins were low mintage. Uh, Somalian elephants from 2004 to 2008. These coins sell well over a hundred dollar piece. That's pretty cool. I didn't know that myself, but there's a lot of esoteric products that sell on the Bay of E uh, for a little bit more. And again, if you can do that, Jay Gill, that's wonderful, sir. You have the skills, you have the ability. You know, not everybody does. So, uh, you know, that's like I said, if, it, it, no matter what market is, whether it's eBay, whether it's buying from local coin stores, whether it's uh, getting into crypto markets, stocks and bonds, you have to know how the game is played for the most part. And you got to know who the players are and who you, again, I've said this enough times. So if you can do that, you're going to come out ahead of the game. And it looks like you know what you're doing, sir. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate that. Man, look at that rain coming down, folks. I know you can't see it, but wow. Here, I'll show you. Hang on a second. Let me, Butler Research. I can't wait till Ted's new article this weekend to see what he says, by the way. And uh, I'm going to just show you what it looks like outside if you don't live in my area. Uh, where's my Lauderdale by the Sea cam? It's called the wind jammer, and it's coming down. I know it's not a wind jammer. Where is the wind jammer? Yeah, there we go. Live beach cam. See what it looks like over the beach here. I'm looking at my windows, and it is just typical Florida rainstorm here, folks. Where is it? There you go. Visibility. Now, if it rains, I, I got friends in Southern California. I was out there one time, and it rained like this. Uh, or it looked like it was going to rain like this, and they thought it was the end of the world. So <laughs> these are daily rainstorms in Florida. All right, I, dig I, went off the, uh, I went off the track here. Sorry about that. Hey, this is Brian Kuzmar. Who am I? I'm a 40-year-plus coin dealer. I've been in this location since 1995. I advertise to beat Atmex, JM, and SD Bullion. Uh, prices, the big three guys out there, nothing wrong with them. But, you know, my motto is buy local, folks. Keep that money local. Uh, and uh, again, I'm here 10 to 4, Mondays through Fridays. Give me a call anytime if you're a local customer and you live in South Florida. If you don't live in South Florida, I can't encourage you enough to go out and find a local coin store that can service you, uh, even if you have to drive an hour or two to do it. Uh, you know, I have people that drive a couple hours to come visit me from uh, um, north of here, like in uh, Vero Beach and that area, which really surprises the hell out of me. I figure most people are going to not want to drive more than an hour. But again, it's worth it to find uh, a good local dealer. And even if I'm not local two hours away, it still keeps the money in the state. Hey, thanks for watching. Have yourself a wonderful weekend. Uh, I'm going to try myself, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye now. Ooh. Hear that thunder? <laughs>